Edge and Christian were one of the biggest tag teams in wrestling history. Every fan remembers their tag title reigns, their TLC matches and their ultimate singles runs. While they were a team, many fans didn't really distinguish between the two and they were seen as equal. They had similar styles, similar looks and similar abilities. So why is it that Edge became a much bigger star? Well in this video, I've got you covered. I'll break down each period of their careers and analyze what helped Edge to become a top WWE superstar while Christian had to settle for just being an upper mid card wrestler for much of his WWE career. Whether you're more of an Edge head or a peep, this will hopefully shed some light on why the pair ended up having two very different career paths in this business. So without further ado, let's get into it. Firstly, Edge initially stood out in the tag team from 1997 to 2001. Edge broke into the WWE in 1996 and had his first televised singles match in 1998. He officially debuted a little before his counterpart, but he pretty much got Christian a tryout and got him hired as the two were best friends since childhood. Edge eventually joined forces with Christian as part of the brood in October 1998. From the start, it was clear that Edge had a better, more marketable look. He was like a rock star coming out with a trench coat and shades. Once you looked at Edge, you could see he was a star. In contrast to this, Christian debuted as his little brother and somewhat considered as his sidekick as the two teamed together. Neither guy was known as a body guy, but Christian was much shorter and lighter than Edge, and this was really noticeable when Christian was in the ring with big guys like Triple H and The Rock. Christian didn't look like a main event superstar, but Edge arguably did. Christian seemed too small to take seriously. He was a good worker, but it wasn't enough to make up for his size and many fans couldn't buy that he could compete with the big boys. Edge was also more favoured backstage. Many argue that the only reason that Edge got the push after their split was because of his sheer size and look. The higher ups in WWE simply believed that he had something that Christian didn't have. If you actually look back at a lot of their important matches and title victories as a team, it was Edge who would often get the final pin in the big victories. And each time they did a job, Christian would often take the pin. And new World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Champion. Edge always had the natural attributes that WWE valued, and they always saw him as a potential superstar. Edge won the King of the Ring and was set for stardom from 2001 to 2002. WWE realized that it had too much talent with the WCW purchase in 2001 and decided to build on their own talent over the incoming WCW stars. At this point, the tag team of Edge and Christian had run its course. Going into King of the Ring, Edge and Christian were heels but Edge was more over with the crowd, which led to his eventual face turn. He went over both Rhino and Kurt Angle at the King of the Ring pay-per-view, which made him look like a worthy winner. While Edge won in the final, Christian went out in the semi-final to Kurt Angle. This was the catalyst to ENC's breakup and Christian's growing jealousy towards Edge. Edge was simply more over than Christian due to his look and ring style, and Christian was viewed as the Genetti of the group. Many Christian fans do argue that back in 2001, Christian had the more entertaining moveset, more charisma, and a better personality. However, the majority didn't see it that way, which led to SummerSlam 2001, where Edge was booked to win the Intercontinental title, while Christian was left off the card entirely. A few weeks later, Christian turned on Edge in their hometown. And at Unforgiven 2001, he won the title from Edge. However, that was the only win Christian got in the feud, as Edge basically destroyed Christian during their rivalry and went on to unify the United States title and Intercontinental title. Edge had some good singles matches with the likes of Test, William Regal and Kurt Angle, while Christian had to settle for the European title, winning it in a match against Bradshaw that wasn't even shown on TV. Christian was also given his temper tantrum gimmick at this point, where he would throw a fit at the end of a match when he lost. This was given to him by Vince McMahon, as he had a reputation for being a crybaby backstage, because he would complain about not getting pushed enough. Get that boy hey, out! Get him a diaper! Don't do it! Powder his bottom! No! At WrestleMania 18, both were in matches that could have been better, though Christian had the far more entertaining role that night in the hardcore title match. Hard roll! There's a new champion come to Come on! But by this point, it was clear that WWE wanted Edge to be in the main event for a long time and they were just waiting for the right moment. The first brand split favoured Edge more than Christian, 2002 to 2004. I'll take Edge. 
By 2002, after the brand split, Edge was the one sent to the so-called B-Show Smackdown, but it turned out he would have a lot more freedom than someone like Christian in the same position who stayed on Raw. The executives of Raw ended up being pretty overprotective and didn't really want to take chances with lower card talent as they still had most of the top talents from the late 90s around. During this time, both men were about even on the mic, but Edge had more stage presence than Christian. So even if Christian was more talented than Edge, Edge was always going to look like a bigger star. Many would argue that Christian was a better worker, but Edge was much more marketable than Christian. He had a magnetic, energetic charisma, which really resonated with the crowd. Christian was a natural heel, but at the time of their split, it was hard to envision Christian ever becoming a main event star. He was a little bland and unremarkable until he developed his Captain Charisma character. More on that later. Although the vast majority of Edge's career was as a heel over on SmackDown, he was well into his first face run, which was what got him over as a singles guy. Edge also had a more crowd-friendly wrestling style. Christian was a good worker, but it took a few years for him to really flourish and develop into the ring general that he would become. In the end, Christian became a part of the faction, the Un-Americans, being a big staple on Raw, whilst Edge was challenging for the WWE Tag Team Championships with Hulk Hogan and later the WWE Championship against Brock Lesnar. Over time, Christian got lost in the shuffle, whilst Edge flourished with matches against Eddie, Angle and Benoit, tagging with Rey Mysterio. This was just before his neck injury, which left him sidelined for over a year. Meanwhile, Christian paired up with Jericho, and they had a great heel run. But again, it seemed as though Christian was just Jericho's sidekick for the most part, and he didn't have much of a singles run. That was until Judgment Day 2003, when he finally got his push with the Intercontinental title. However, a few months later, come SummerSlam 2003, Christian didn't even make the card and ended up dropping his title to RVD shortly after in what was a fantastic ladder match on Raw. Edge returns to high profile matches while Captain Charisma loses steam, 2004 to 2005. By early 2004, Edge was still out with a near career ending neck injury while Christian turned on his partner Chris Jericho. He aligned himself with Trish Stratus as he beat Jericho at WrestleMania 20 in probably his greatest singles match at WrestleMania. WrestleMania 20 made Christian look awesome, especially that shot of him kissing Trish Stratus on the stage after the match, with Jericho looking on in disgust. Oh my god! Oh for god's sakes! The two top tango look they are! <laughs> look at that! However, after that, WWE dropped the ball on Christian, and 2004 was a pretty lackluster year for him, minus the Jericho feud. They feuded for a few months, and Christian even hired himself a problem solver in Tyson Tomko. Meanwhile, Edge returned in March 2004 and went straight into a feud with Eric Bischoff and Kane on Raw, before winning the Intercontinental Championship for the final time, until being stripped due to injury. Upon his return, Edge began to pursue the World Heavyweight Championship, while also beginning a so heel turn. Christian was still in the mid-card, but Edge was feuding with Shawn Michaels and competing for the World Heavyweight title against Chris Benoit and Triple H. Both Edge and Christian were two great wrestlers, but clearly in Vince's eyes, Edge had more it factor than Christian. Edge ended up winning the first Money in the Bank contract in 2005, which shows the faith management had in him, but Christian was slowly coming into his own as Captain Charisma. I'm Captain Charisma, read him and weeps. I'm gonna throw you out for all my peeps. He ended up getting himself hugely over and it got to the point where he was getting better reactions than John Cena. Christian was so hot in 2005 that it was rumored that even his shirt was outselling Cena's. He worked himself into the most high profile match of his career at Vengeance 2005 against Cena and Jericho for the WWE title. Unfortunately, WWE didn't pull the trigger despite his growing momentum. If they did, he would have actually won a world title before Edge. Many would argue that at this point, he was probably on par with Edge in terms of ability and arguably, he was more popular at the time. Although Christian was having a better singles career at that point and was killing it with the Captain Charisma character, the one thing that Edge had, which Christian didn't, was the faith of Vince McMahon. It's been well documented that Vince was never a fan of Christian's in-ring work and overall appearance. Former WWE writer Alex Greenfield mentioned the idea of Vince McMahon's to cover Christian's face with a blue dot whenever he came out. Thankfully, that didn't end up happening, but on the Feb 3rd, 2014 edition of Raw, JBL actually referred to the story while Christian was in a match against Jack Swagger. A blue dot would look better than Christian's face. Christian shortly went from having a WWE title match at one pay-per-view to being left off the next card and subsequently drafted to SmackDown where he would job a lot. 
They even had him on Velocity right before he left. Not to mention all the reports about them purposely not selling his merchandise at live events and trying to rebrand him as CLB. What the hell is CLB? What does that mean? CLB. Creepy little bastard. I'm gonna put you in your place, you creepy little bastard. It was an unfortunate end before his timely move to TNA. Edge lead to Matt Hardy Love Triangle 2005. After winning Money in the Bank in 2005, Edge's career ran slightly stale. However, what really got Edge super over as a heel was the Matt Hardy Lita Love Triangle where everyone absolutely hated him because they thought that this guy was a scumbag in real life. It got him huge heat and was really what led him to being pushed to the moon, which wasn't a bad thing as people paid to see him get beat down. Edge did a great job capitalizing on it and he eventually came out as the victor in the feud, sending Hardy off to SmackDown. By the end of it, his stock was raised drastically, priming him for his eventual WWE title victory. Edge becomes WWE Champion and Christian moves to TNA, 2005-2007. to 2007. By the end of 2005, Christian went to TNA and because of that, he kind of fell off the map with the mainstream WWE audience. So while Edge was competing weekly in front of 15,000 people and 4 or 5 million at home, Christian was in Orlando in front of a thousand people weekly with one million watching at home. In early 2006, Edge went on to cash in his Money in the Bank contract. Edge always was a personal favorite of Vince's and Edge has said when he cashed in his Money in the Bank contract on Cena the first time at New Year's Revolution, when he hands the briefcase to Vince, Vince mouthed the words to him, prove them wrong. Vince wanted Edge as the champion, but the rest of creative was totally against it. He became the rated R superstar and legitimized himself as a top star and really built the distance between himself and Christian. Edge would go on to prove Vince right throughout 2006. The raw ratings during his first championship reign were amazing for the time. Although he quickly ended up passing the title back to Cena, he would go on to have a feud with Mick Foley and have the best hardcore match in WrestleMania history. Then, in a genius booking move by the WWE, they paired him against Cena, who was starting to get hated so much that anyone who was opposite him suddenly became the face by a lesser of two evils situation. Edge spearing the WWE Champion! This caused the fans to get behind him more and help push him along. Edge will go down as one of Cena's greatest rivals and their matches were great together, in particular their TLC match at Unforgiven. Many could argue that had Christian been given this sort of push during his time in WWE, he just wouldn't have been able to compete with Cena the way Edge did. Edge was so filthy on it and it wouldn't have been possible for Christian to be able to generate as much heat as Edge did during this time. Shortly after, Edge joined up to create Rated RKO with Randy Orton, probably the best makeshift tag team of the 2000s generation. Christian really took his game to the next level when he joined TNA. The TNA run of Christian allowed him to get his first opportunity in wrestling as a singles main eventer. Christian was instantly pushed to the top of the card and would eventually win the NWA Championship as the world title for TNA at the time. He had some great matches during his time there against the likes of Samoa Joe and Frankie Kazarian. Christian loved working with the younger talents and trying to make them look like bigger stars. Edge becomes a megastar while Christian settles for the ECW title. 2007 to 2010. In 2007, Edge went from strength to strength and cashed his newly won Money in the Bank contract against The Undertaker, which played out beautifully. Come on, Edge, no, not this way. No, damn it. Not this way. Not this way. Damn it. He then got injured but returned to relight The Undertaker feud, where they main evented WrestleMania 24 and SummerSlam 2008. Edge was now a firm centerpiece in the main event scene in WWE. Edge carried SmackDown and was the star of the show for several years. In 2009, after a great run with TNA, WWE decided to bring Christian back to be the face of their revamped ECW brand. There were internet rumors circulating around about his impending return and when he finally did show up on TV, it was probably one of the most anticlimactic returns in WWE history. It just fell so flat. It's Christian! Vince probably told him to react like that, but it was just such a lifeless response for someone who was such a big part of WWE in the years prior. However, that didn't stop Christian from becoming the shining light of the brand and carrying it on his back single-handedly for close to a year. He won the ECW title and helped to elevate a number of different superstars in the brand. 
He had some great matches with the likes of Jack Swagger, Tommy Dreamer and Shelton Benjamin. In particular, the singles bout against Shelton Benjamin at TLC 2009 delivered a classic ladder match. From that point, it was widely considered that Christian was the better worker, but Edge had the better look, better promos and better connection with the fans. Although he might not have come close to being as good as Christian in the ring during this time, no matter how hard Christian tried, he just couldn't get a reaction from the audience like Edge. This is why Edge was way more suited to being a top star, while Christian was best suited to being the mid, upper mid card workhorse. Christian finally becomes world heavyweight champion because Edge retires. 2010 to 2014. Edge returned after injury in the 2010 Royal Rumble to a thunderous ovation and wound up winning the whole thing. He went on to turn face for the first time since 2004, but ultimately lost his title match at WrestleMania 26 to Chris Jericho. Overall, Edge had a bit of an up and down 2010. He had no memorable feuds or great matches, but he did end up winning the World Heavyweight title at the end of the year. Christian's 2010 was also not too memorable, as he would get injured near the back end of the year, resulting in him being sidelined for 6 months. Skip forward to 2011, and after Edge's WrestleMania 27 victory against Alberto Del Rio, he was forced to retire and give up his title due to a career-ending neck injury. Before Edge's retirement announcement, there were absolutely zero plans for Christian to win the World Heavyweight Championship upon his return from injury. Vince McMahon had proven time and time again that he had absolutely no interest in pushing Christian as a long-term main event talent. However, because of the unfortunate situation with Edge, Vince and Creative decided to capitalise on this. For weeks on SmackDown, Christian rode the sympathy from the fans in response to Edge's untimely retirement. And at Extreme Rules, the Toronto native finally accomplished his childhood dream of becoming world champion in WWE. With Edge at ringside, the best friends and former tag team champions celebrated in one of the most emotional moments in Christian's WWE career. To finally become the world heavyweight champion and embracing his best friend, Edge. However, on the May 6th episode of SmackDown, Christian would lose the world heavyweight championship to Randy Orton, ending his reign after just five days. Randy This is likely because WWE knew once the novelty of Edge's retirement had worn off and the Farewell Edge t-shirt stopped selling, both the fans and the writers would have likely lost interest in Christian. WWE's official Twitter account was flooded with anger-filled tweets, criticizing the company for stripping the title away from him so quickly, only to give it to an established main event attraction whose title history is long and storied. Christian did regain the title at Money in the Bank, only to lose it once more, this time after a somewhat more respectable 28 days. The match at SummerSlam 2011 against Randy Orton was arguably the best of Christian's WWE career. It was hard to argue with the decision, as Orton was the second biggest act in the WWE at the time, and although the writers did everything possible to make him a mega heel superstar who could carry the company, the fans would instead cheer. It is that undeniable popularity that resulted in Orton's placement on SmackDown and his rapid World Championship win. Christian just simply didn't have it, and he just wasn't popular or polarizing enough to be a suitable replacement for Edge. Over the past few years, previous superstars have come out and talked about how Christian is a genius in the ring and loved working with him because he planned everything out so well and knew exactly what he was doing with psychology. I mean, he was having some of the best matches of his career in 2011, but that wasn't enough for the WWE Universe to care enough to help keep him at the top. In his later years in WWE, he had various injuries and wouldn't reach his peak of 2011 again. At SummerSlam 2013, he failed to beat Alberto Del Rio for the World Heavyweight title before being sidelined with a concussion in 2014, ultimately retiring shortly after. Returns in 2020 and 2021. In the last two years, the wrestling world has witnessed two miracles. At the 2020 Rumble, nine years since retiring with a career-ending neck injury, Edge returned to a thunderous ovation, defying all odds and coming back to end things on his own terms. No, no way. A year later at the 2021 Rumble, Christian followed suit, returning from retirement and competing once more. Edge's Rumble gave the world one of the biggest and best reactions of all time. In an emotional moment shared with the fans, Christian's Rumble return was less grand. The 2021 Royal Rumble was one of the strangest of all times, with no fans in attendance in the Thunderdome. The emotion between he and Edge was there, as they shared a wonderful moment with one another, but the lack of fans meant that it will always feel like something is missing. And speaking of Edge, here comes his former buddy, Christian 
Christian moved to AEW, where he defeated Kenny Omega on the debut episode of AEW Rampage in a fantastic match, winning the Impact World Championship. He's also been putting over younger talents such as Jungle Boy and Private Party. Edge, on the other hand, has had many more high caliber matches. This includes his WrestleMania main event with Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns, as well as his singles match with Reigns and one of the best rivalries of 2021 against Seth Rollins. Edge's individual moments and main event matches have felt larger than Christian's thus far, which again shows how Edge appears to be more popular and has had the more storied career over the years. Overall, it seems that Edge has always had something extra over Christian. Edge just always had a little easier time connecting with the crowds and his ultimate opportunist and rated R superstar gimmicks will always be firm fan favourites. Many fans would disagree that Edge is a better wrestler than Christian, but you just never think of a Christian match as pay-per-view defining, whereas Edge has stolen the show quite a few times. Christian was definitely more consistent at better at selling and working with lesser workers, but at the end of the day, we all remember the Edge matches far more. That's not saying Edge is vastly superior, but in storytelling, his matches definitely had that X factor that Christian sometimes didn't. Edge is seen by many as the greatest heel of the late 2000s. If Christian had done all the things that Edge did, winning King of the Ring 2001, beating Orton for the IC title, having a feud with Matt Hardy, going on to win Money in the Bank, feuding with John Cena and main eventing with The Undertaker at WrestleMania, could Christian really have had the same impact if he was put into those positions? I don't think so. All in all, Edge and Christian are very similar. They are both entertaining, they both have good in-ring skills, they both have good mic skills, and they both play heel very well. Edge just had the look, more presence, and was arguably that bit better as a character. If Edge is the rated R superstar, then Christian is definitely the underrated R superstar. But that brings us to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And also let us know your thoughts in the comments. Who did you prefer more, Edge or Christian? Hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.